episode. I'm gonna dedicate this video real quick to uh, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Um, it's just all to bring the glory to Him, and hopefully, uh, so you guys can uh, just have more motivation to pursue Him and really get to know Him better. All right, here we go. This is Isaac Underhill here. Uh, I just wanted to share some amazing things that God had done to me this summer. Um, how God has literally changed my life um, forever this summer. Um, got some crazy things that happened, uh, things that I never thought would have happened. And I just want to share with you all. Hopefully it's an encouragement and just that you guys can know a little bit more about me. I could consider this to be my testimony, you know, um, just how God pulled me up uh, out of the muck that I was in. Uh, how he literally opened my eyes um, to the spiritual world, you know. Um, and yes. So my journey started off when I was like looking up YouTube videos and stuff. I was watching music videos of rappers and stuff like that. You know, I was crazy. I was watching like all kinds of really stupid music videos like Lil Wayne, Rick Ross, um, all those like tough guy like, uh, stuff. And I mean, I really like rap music and stuff like that, but that was the kind of music that I was pounding my ears 24-7, you know, um, in my iPod and stuff. And I was, look I was watching music videos and there was a related video on YouTube. That was um said like demonic rap industry or something. So I, I checked it out. Um I'll I'll put it here I think. And that video basically um woke me up to the fact that these rappers are literally their music is like demonic. And that was just like a serious wake up call for me because I mean all my life I've been calling myself a Christian, you know, I went to church, I uh, went to Sunday school, I knew that Jesus had died for my sins. Like I knew all that in my head. But it got to a point, you know, where I was starting to question, you know, what are the chances I was brought up in the right religion? What is this? What is that? Like, everything around me just seems so phony and fake. I mean, I know a lot of you guys can relate to a lot of the churches um, you've been to, a lot of the people you talk to. I mean, everyone, whether it's Christian or non-Christian, they'll just be focused on the same thing. Like, you could be a Christian kid and be doing all the same garbage as other random kids in high school or whatever, but except, like, you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, so it's all good, so you're going to heaven, right? I mean, not really, that's not how it works, but that's what I thought at the time. So anyways, this was a big thing for me because this was the first time I realized that I was literally being um, used by the devil. Like, he had tricked me into listening to all this, like, music. It was my first realization of that there was a good and there's an evil. You know, that God's the good and that the devil is the evil or whatever. Um, and that was really my first time realizing that. So that was a huge awakening for me. Like, I went to my iPod tunes and stuff and I deleted like all those songs like all, all like I like uh I don't even know like like 200 different songs or way way more and just deleted them off my iPod and stuff and it kind of scared me to my senses and I was like man like I really got to go after God like I, like I've been missing so much in my life like I mean like I've been being used by the devil as far as like listening to all this music and stuff like that so after God gave me this first wake up call that the music that I was listening to was demonic, I was like thinking about other areas of my life that um, I had just taken for granted. Like, hey, this is a great, happy thing or whatever, you know, it's great. And so the first thing that came to my mind was video games because I've been like extremely depressed actually for like two years. Um, and I would just like play video games like all day after school. Like I was like a serious gamer. Like I could tell you that like I played like all the Mass Effect games, I played like Team Fortress 2, I played like Assassin's Creed, I played all those games, all kinds of, you know, violence and stuff like that, um, and I was like, you know, what's the purpose behind these games, you know, like, I mean, why, why is there a game where you're going out and like killing lots of people, like, I mean, is this from God, or who is this from, and I was like, hmm, and I, I started to think about that too, and I was like, got really angry actually that I had wasted that much of my life on just more demonic trash and uh i installed all that crap uninstalled all that crap from uh, our computers as i was you know like reevaluating stuff in my life or whatever um another thing i started to think about was i had a whole collection of pokemon cards it was like three thousand cards or whatever um, i didn't play with them that much but like i had a lot of memories from them and i like always liked the pokemon stuff like the video games and like I just, I, that just had always clicked with me, um, and I really liked the card game too, and then the summer, just before this summer, I got into the Magic, the trading card game, which, um, is severely, has like a lot of severely demonic overtones now that I look at it, but 
anyways, uh, so I had all those cards in a box, and I was like, like I'm I'm so angry that I wasted my life on this stuff too. Um, I don't feel right that I could sell it to anyone to have them waste their life on it too. So I'm just gonna go and throw it in the dumpster in the garbage. So like as I was reaching for the box to pick it up, like it was in a box, I was reaching for it. Right as I was reaching for it, like right about to touch it, um, my mom called me and was like, "Hey Isaac, can you help me with something?" Like so I was like, "Sure, sure, ma." And I went to help her with some chores, and I came back upstairs and I was like, "All right, I'm gonna throw it out now." And I went to pick it up again, and I picked it up this time, and I put it on the table. And then my friend called me and started talking to me. So, I, you know, I was talking to him, like, hey, man, what's up? Like, I was just kind of saying whatever, because yeah, my mind was on more important stuff. You know, like, I was trying to get rid of this stuff. But also, at the same time, um, when I put down the box, like, through my mind, these thoughts were going, like, oh, you don't really have to get rid of that. Like, this is stuff that you liked your whole life. Like, you've had so much fun with this. Like come on, man, like, you don't have to do that, like, no, it's, it's okay, but I was like, nah, this is, like, this, this stuff is, like, from the devil, I don't want this in my house, like, he's already tricked me for so long in my life, I don't want any of this crap, and, uh, and then after my friend finished calling, then my sister, uh, so I went to pick up the box again, like, literally, I went to pick up the box, and it was, like, some, like, alarm went off or something, and, like, somehow, like, right as I was about to pick up the box, uh, my sister called me and was, like, guys can you help me with my homework so i was like sure man so i went to help her with her homework and then same thing those thoughts were running through my head like oh man you you could sell them for money at least like at least get some money i mean i know you're going after god now but just maybe you could get some money and that would help you um you know just sell them on ebay stuff like that and i was like yeah maybe i don't yeah I'm, i was like no you know i'm gonna throw this crap in the garbage um and then i went back got the box and went went out i just carried it. i was like no matter what like i'm just if someone calls me or whatever hey i'm just going into the dumpster now it's just a minute whatever so i picked up the box went all the way down the alley um it was this heavy box it was probably like 30 pounds because i was a crazy amount of stuff and i chucked it in the alley like this into the into the dumpster and right as i chucked it um a weight left my shoulders like from behind my shoulders not like i mean it was a heavy box like i chucked it into the thing but there was a weight behind my shoulders that just lifted off like um like I actually felt like weight lift off my shoulders um in and, and I kind of felt like a huh, like a breath of like fresh air um and looking back on it now um when that weight had like lifted off my shoulders I'm almost positive that was some kind of like demonic presence or whatever that um was with those cards or whatever um and had caused me to be so obsessed with it for years and years. Another thing that I cut out of my life was um the fact that I was playing basketball competitively for high school. Um, my whole life I've been a basketball fan. I would like played since I was a little kid. You know, I always loved the sport. Um, my family loves the sport. Like we're all basketball freaks. My family is like follow college teams, all that kind of stuff. But um in high school I've been playing it. Uh, my junior year and sophomore year especially because I've been so striving to get better, you know, training to get strong and all that kind of stuff, mostly out of the hate in my heart for um, a coach um, that had cut me from a team and also because I wanted to, like, prove to everyone that I was worth something. And this was, like, the only um, image of myself that I felt like people would see as worth something, like, in the form of success or anything. Like, my success in basketball could be my success as a person. Also, the other guys that were on the team with me, um, you know, they would view themselves only um, based on, like, you know, the people they know, like, the clothes they wear, um, however many girls that they've had sex with and stuff like that. Um, and, like, they would be, like, doing drugs and stuff sometimes, like, doing alcohol, going to parties, all that kind of stuff. Um, that was never me, but those were the kind of people that I would, like, hang around with. So it was kind of weird um, to hang around with them. And they would also just be like negative, like cussing at each other, like, oh, you suck. Like, just every kind of like insult you can imagine, just randomly to everyone, like, it's always a power struggle. Um, so I just decided that I didn't want to like hang around that environment anymore because, like, it would be hard for me to, um, hang around them anymore, uh, after I, you know, started knowing God and stuff, started following Jesus and stuff like that. So in the meantime, as I was like chasing after Jesus after uh, this basketball camp all day, so I was watching these YouTube videos by this dude Tiario, 
uh, just getting a lot of wisdom and stuff, uh, getting a lot of truth about how to follow Jesus from the heart, um, pointing out uh, problems in society where like how the devil's got certain stuff under lock. Um, and I was just watching these videos all the time, but I was still, um, so I was going after God, but I was still having problems with like um, masturbation and pornography and stuff like that. Um, and as far as from the stuff that I had heard and things like that, it seemed kind of like just as a Christian, you know, you have these uh, the struggles with sexual stuff, but it's just like, it's just a battle and you just have to, you know, ask God to forgive you and it's all good, man. That's kind of what I was feeling inside. I was like, hey, man, it's cool. I'm still going after God, but, you know, this is the other stuff that, you know, I this is how everyone does. This is what all kids do, you know, all kids I've ever talked to in high school. This is all the stuff they do, you know, like most of the Christians I've ever known. This is all the stuff that they do, you know, they all masturbate, like half of them watch pornography, like it's whatever, you know, God will forgive me and stuff like that. Um, and then it, it's really started to weigh on my conscience that I was thinking like that. And uh, I started trying to stop, like just cold, just stop and not do that stuff anymore. But then it was a, one day uh, I was at my grandma's house. There was no one there. It was just me and there was a laptop or whatever. Um, and I was tempted and I fell and I popped at the laptop. Uh, went to this website of pornography right as I clicked up that website the exact instant that I clicked up that website um the door to the house opened um and my sister walked in she wasn't even supposed to be there at all but you know so I like closed on the website and all that kind of stuff and I was actually like oh god thanks for waking me up I don't know what I was doing there god um my bad I got you you don't want me to do that got you my bad sorry god sorry I'm so, I'm so dumb um so that's God actually, I'm positive that was God because it was at the exact instant that I popped up that website, my sister walked in the door. Um, and then a week later, I was at our apartment. Um, I was chilling. Uh, I was being tempted again, and I was about to masturbate. And I was like, "It's alright. I'm not gonna watch pornography." But hey, like everybody, everybody masturbates. You know, you're a teenager. I know everybody does it. This is all I've ever heard from everybody. You know, everybody masturbates. Like this is like part of life. You know. And I was about to do that, and right as I was about to do that, uh, this, this random shadow, like a, someone stood in front of our apartment door and just stood there, like just stood in front of our door. And I thought it was like my mom or something coming. So I like woke to my sense, and I was like, God, like what am I doing, God? Like I'm so dumb. How can I, how can I keep falling for the same thing? And right as I thought that, uh, this person who was standing in front of our door just left. I have no idea what this person was doing. They were just, like, I see their shadow there. And that's another thing. Um, God totally woke me up on that and showed me that's not what I was supposed to be doing. At this point, I was, like, actually had a really pretty good relationship with God, I think. I mean, I was nowhere near as on the level that I'm at now. But, I, you know, I was, um, for, sins were forgiven. Um, I was praying to God all the time, like, God... Uh, Save me, God, like, um, show, give me wisdom. Um, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Uh, I was just, you know, praying like that all the time inside my head, searching, searching after wisdom and stuff. And it was the night, it was the nighttime, and I had a dream. Um, you know, it was a really intense dream, and I don't usually have dreams or dreams that I remember. Um, and it was about one of my friends, so actually, it was so uh, intense or whatever, and like in my head that I actually um, I wrote it down on like a piece of paper, um, so I could remember it. Um, well, I'm, I'll just paraphrase it or whatever. So uh, I was I was watching the sky with this lady, um, and there was dark streaks across the sky, and then this lady told me that it was a UFO. Which is, this this is weird, but just bear with me. Um, then I'm with eight or 12 other people my dad is there and so and then there's a family friend that's there um oh yeah i could see all these people but i couldn't see their faces um we were standing together at a black top um there's a perfectly blue sky and then i see white clouds kind of open up out of nowhere yeah so there's like this blue sky and then these clouds just um like they just like open like out of a point um so blue clouds out of nowhere um, and then they made the bright outline of an angel. So it literally uh, made outline of this thing with wings that was white, and it was it was an angel. So they made an outline of angel. Then 
the, the outline of the angel turns into a dove, and that dove separated into eight or twelve doves and flied, oh, and then flew around making the shape of the angel. Then the birds flew down from the sky and landed on top of or in front of the, the eight or twelve people that were in the circle. Um, and I couldn't see these people's faces except for my dad and this family friend that I knew. Um, these were perfect white doves. Um, then this dream skipped to another part. Um, this is a dream about my friend now, a uh, friend in a place where I used to live. Uh, so I'm at my friend's house, but it's a movie set. So if you know about what a movie set is, it's not three-dimensional, it's two-dimensional. So it's only flat. If you turn it sideways, it's nothing. there's nothing behind it. So it, his house was a movie set, and I could see right through it on the side. I uh, go into the house and talk about how I saw an angel. Then uh, this friend and his dad are there. Uh, this friend doesn't hear me and walks upstairs. So I, I was like, say, hey guys, I, I saw an angel. And this friend just like stared right past me and just walked up, walked upstairs in his house. Um, um, his dad kind of chuckles and walks away. Um, I follow my friend upstairs into his room and then there's very loud music playing in the house. So if you can imagine like this loud bass music or like dubstep music. It's like, <sighs> like blasting and this is in a dream so this was this was a, a crazy crazy dream um that I, I know that this dream came from god like it it's just it's yeah so anyway so anyways there's this loud music just loud like vibrating the air just this loud music um and this my friend is trying to tell me something but i can't really hear him um i'm thinking in my head so i remember this in the dream i was thinking in my head that I needed to tell him about Jesus, but all this friend would do um, is just say random stuff to me, and I couldn't hear him either. Uh, he left the he left the rooms that we were in distracted about something else, um, and then I picked up a Rubik's cube. Some it's you know those uh, cubes with the colors, and you try to get them all on the same side. It's something that I've that I can do. Um, I picked it up and I tried to solve it, and it just wouldn't it wouldn't solve. Um, and then the music kept getting like just increasingly loud like <laughs> like it was almost like a dubstep bass like I can't like I, I don't even listen to that music but that's what it was um and then I woke up so that was my first dream I had and the, the date on this dream was July 1st 2013 then I had another dream um about another one of my friends from where I used to live um and this friend in the dream it was a much briefer dream but it lasted the whole night um, and I completely remember it. Like, as I'm remembering it, it feels like a memory, not like a dream, which is not, um, which is why these two dreams really got my attention because nothing like this has ever happened to me before. And in this dream with my friend, uh, we were, I was in the friend's house and we were upstairs and the friend's dad was at a computer and there was a radar like this, like in a movie with, with like submarine missiles or whatever. And it's like, blink, blink, blink. Uh, so there was this radar on the screen like that by his computer and he was staring at it like this and he was like red in the face and he was sweating like he was sweating like crazy he was like it's a nuclear attack it's a nuclear attack and he was just sweating like 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 he was like crazy like he was like he, this dude was crazy and he was sitting there and he was like it's a nuclear attack and I was sitting there I was staring at him and I was like this guy's crazy I was like this there's no nuclear attack, like, what, like, is he okay, like, what, and somehow, I knew that my friend was downstairs, where we usually hang out in his house, so I walked down the stairs, and my friend was there on the couch, um, and I was like, hey, come on, let's go, your, your dad thinks there's a nuclear attack, like, I don't know what's up with him, but, uh, come on, let's tell him, like, let's tell him it's okay, that's what I was telling my friend, I was talking to him, and my friend, he's sitting there on the couch, um, and he had a, a laptop computer in front of him, um, and he was just sitting there staring at the laptop computer, like, like he was like completely zoned out. He was like, and I was like, come on, like, let's go tell your dad. Come on, man. Like, he thinks it's a nuclear attack or something. Come on. Like, he's not listening to me. Come on. Like, you, maybe you can come too and we'll, uh, help him out. And my friend was just sitting there like this. Like, he had his hands on the keyboard and he was like, and just staring at the thing. And I was like talking to him and it was like I wasn't there or I, like the computer light was like shining on his face and like he couldn't hear me. 
Um, and I woke up from that dream too. So that was the second dream that I had. That dream, that dream was on um July second. As I began to like pray about these dreams, like God, what do these dreams mean? And I was like thinking about it a lot, and it was really heavy on my mind. Like the day that I had those dreams, uh, when I woke up, the whole day throughout the day, like those p pieces of those dreams kept replaying themselves in my head. So like I was constantly thinking about it. Um, and I was praying for God to give me understanding about it. Um, and the understanding that kept coming back to me is that, um, your, um, your friends aren't hearing Jesus or your friends aren't hearing the gospel or, um, your, your friends, um, won't listen to you or you need to, you need to talk to your friends. You need to talk to your friends. That was the message that, um, the Holy Spirit was sending back to me. And I, at that time, I hadn't really talked to people about, the gospel and talk to people about that Jesus died for our sins and like look at me like he's like he's basically living inside of me now basically um I hadn't talked to anyone about that so I felt nervous and I kind of put it on hold for a couple of days and even though God was telling that to me as soon as I had those dreams I like put it on hold for a little bit I mean now I know like don't quench the spirit you know all that stuff I mean now if the Holy Spirit tells me something like I'll like do it right away I mean, hopefully, I mean, pray for, pray for me, like, if that happens, like, that, that I'll do it right away, um, you know, I'm not ashamed of, of the gospel, or ashamed of Jesus anymore, but I was at that time, and, um, anyway, so it was, like, five days later, and I was laying at bed, in bed at night, and it was really, really bugging me, like, it was just on my conscience, like, the fact that these friends didn't really know Jesus, um, and so I was like, you know what, God, I'll call them tomorrow. I promise you, I'll call them tomorrow. I'm sorry for putting you off, God. I'm so, I'm sorry. I'll call them tomorrow. I promise. And right as I thought that, right as I thought that thought, um, my phone vibrated. So, and my phone and my aunt, uh, I mean, she she randomly sent a text message at 11:30 that exact moment, right as I had thought that in my head. And it was some multimedia message error thing. So it wasn't even a message. It was like an error message. And just lit up my phone. And I was like, oh, okay, God. So you want so you want me to text them now or whatever? And the answer I got back was yes. Like like I'm saying, it's kind of like, it's not really, it was like a voice. But it was like another thought. Um, so I was coming back to me like, yes. So, so I texted these friends and I was like, hey, like I got to talk to you soon. Peace out. Um, that was basically what I said to them. And uh, one of my friends got back to me, and he told me that he talked to me the day after that because he was on vacation. So I waited another day, um, and he called me and he talked to me. Um, and I was talking to him, and I was like, before the conversation stuff, I was like, God, I don't know all the right words to say. I'm kind of a little nervous about this. Um, just I trust you. Um, I know that you know what you're doing. Um, you know, you're going to use me here. So just you speak the words, not me, because I'm stupid. And I'm going to mess up. You know, I'm going to say the wrong thing, you know, whatever. Um, and I called up this friend and I was talking to him. And it turns out during the conversation I was having, I was talking about like me getting into a relationship with Jesus for real. Um, this kid was my friend. He was kind of like, I guess you could say a casual Christian or whatever. Um, so this dude was my friend, um, and he started saying that that just the day before he was driving in the car and he was with his friend and they were uh, talking about like, oh, wouldn't it be crazy like if we're living in the last days of the Bible, like as far as uh, the end times, like before the end of the world, you know, before the rapture, like look at all this technology we have. And they were just talking about that the day before. Um, and I was talking about that to my friend a little bit because in this dream uh his dad was like seeing a nuclear missile thing on the screen um and god's timing had worked it out that he would have a conversation with someone in a car for a day and then the next day that i would uh tell him that dream that i had about him and talk to him about like how real god is in my life and in my heart um and it was just it was a great conversation um, he, he called me back. No, he sent, um, my parents an email or something or called me. Um, I was just like, that was the most meaningful thing. Like anyone has ever said to me, like in my whole life, that that's the most meaningful thing. 
Um, and I was just so happy that God had gave me the right words to say and stuff like that. Cause like, like I didn't even have any idea of what I was going to say, but like literally once I started talking, it just, it just all came. So that was, um, the first, the first friend that I contacted and it was just great experience. So around this time, after I called my friends, um, I decided to go on a 40 day fast. Um, this was because I was watching that guy's videos, his name is Tiario, um, and in one of his videos he was talking about uh, how Jesus Jesus uh, was saying that these these demons, there were specific type of demons that the disciples couldn't cast out of a dude, and he was saying that these demons don't go out except by fasting and prayer. Um, and I was still having like lust um, attacks, kind of, like, um, still being tempted like that, and I had actually fallen a couple more times since even after God had warned me because I was stupid. Like, I I was just dumb. Like, what's that proverb about? Like, a fool that returns to his folly is like a dog that returns to his vomit. Like that that was me. Like I, and it was also partially just like the desires of the flesh. Like you get that like chemical like hormone thing, especially when you're like a young guy or whatever, and it's just it's crazy. Anyway, so. I've seen that video and I was like, man, I'm still having these sexual problems and stuff. And also this was, this was freaking me out. I would be praying to God and stuff, like praying to Jesus, like Jesus, I love you. And at the same time, there would be like a thought in my head in the recesses of my brain. that would be like, I hate you, Jesus. I hate you. And I, like, I was having like conflicting thoughts inside of me. Um, and I was feeling like I needed to fast to get out of the sexual temptation to kind of to, for me to just like um focus just on god um and just realize that all this fleshly stuff all this earthly stuff you know the clothes i'm wearing the food you eat like the stuff you wear like the, all that stuff is just nothing it's like it's gone in a second your life is over like this right so i was i was so that's why i went on the fast was to get over these sexual desires that's why i went on it um i was mostly just trying to control my flesh um there's that bible verse about like paul talks about like he he fasts to um pummel his flesh and subdue it that's basically what i was trying to do and during this time you know i was praying to god and all that stuff um and uh it was like five days into the fast or something i don't know five or six days into the fast um and I started getting these like ridiculous, ridiculous sexual, um, perverted, just crazy perverted thoughts. Um, just like everywhere I go, everyone I see, my if I would see my family members, if I would see random people, if I would see whatever, it was just like flashing in, into my brain and all these like thoughts and like fantasies of like ridiculous stuff that I wasn't even trying for or whatever because I was following God, but it was all just flashing in my head like everywhere, like. For two for two days that lasted, and I was praying, God, take this away from me. God, take this. God, I can't do this on my own. I can't do this on my own strength. Like I need you. And I was determined. I wasn't gonna mess with that stuff at all. And after the two days of that, um, I had a dream, like how I was talking before about how I had those two dreams with my friends. Um, this is another dream that uh, I have wrote down. Um, and I'll basically just paraphrase it. Um. This dream also too, same kind of thing. I can tell it like when I'm remembering it, it's like a picture in my head and it's clear. And it's like the dream itself only took like three minutes, but I was asleep for the whole night. So um, it's kind of weird, but also too, this this one, this dream was especially good because it was a direct um, answer. And actually, I feel like it was me seeing something in the spiritual realm um, from God. So here it goes. So this dream, um, the date I have wrote down for the top of it is on July 9th. Um, there's a big red eye, eyeball that is hopping around and I think it's calling me or something. Also the eyeball, I'll, I'll just, I'll just explain it. Like I remember, like I wrote this down, but I can explain it clearly. So there was this huge eyeball and it was like, if you've ever seen Lord of the Rings, um, they had a slit in the eye like that. It was gigantic. It was like the size of a like, person. Um, it was just flesh. So it was the eye. And the flesh, like the muscle, it was hanging off the back. Um, there was uh, red everywhere. So it was red mountains, like kind of dark red. It was like mountains and rocks, like jagged rocks, like spikes. And the, there was a sky too. And the sky was like 
red too. The sky was the same kind of color red, and it was just clouds. Like you couldn't see the sky. It was just clouds everywhere, and it was like a horizon. Like, and there was mountains everywhere, and there was also a huge canyon in between all the red rocks like this and it was like there was um spikes too everywhere so that's what the landscape was like so anyways this eyeball thing literally like this huge eyeball um was calling out to me i can't really explain it. it was like it was beckoning um my attention but like not just me like my being of who i was um and it was like staring at me it wasn't really using words it was like communic it was but it was communicating um and i could feel in this dream that i wasn't there but I was watching this happen, so like that I wasn't there, but somehow I was seeing this happen. But anyways, this thing was in in the middle of all this red everywhere, just red the red canyons and everything. Um, and it was sitting there, and it was just staring at me. So this huge eyeball, and it was bloody too. It was like there was some blood on it, like with the muscle, and it was just nasty. It was, it was red, like red orange, and it had the slit, like not like how we have eyeballs, like like with the circle or whatever not like this it was like a slit just a slit down the middle and so it was calling out to me and this was kind of this is, i was just staring right at it it like turned to me it was calling out to me like and i was just looking at it because that's all i could do i was just watching the stream i was just watching it and then um this this angel i think i think it was angel um, it was a person in bright white clothing, like, like, not like this shirt. It was just like, bright, like almost like a light, like you, like if you turn on a light bulb or something, like how that's bright. That's how this whole person was, um, their hands and their feet and everything. Um, but it was, it was a person. It, that's why it wasn't really an angel because it didn't have any wings. But I don't know. I mean, it might have been an angel. I kind of think it was, um, because, um, looking up this stuff and stuff like that, like sometimes angels like will not have wings when they appear and stuff like that. Like they can appear in different forms, same way that um, demons and stuff can appear in different forms. Um, so this thing in white shows up on this landscape, just kind of out of nowhere. And I don't remember appearing; it just was there. If you know what I mean, kind of. Um, and it comes up to this thing, and there's also a catapult there now, and it picks up this eyeball. So the eyeball is like the size of it. it's like huge so like it's like five foot by five feet like a complete circle and it picks up this thing and it puts it on the, this catapult and um then it this this angel or whatever this light light person um takes a cloth not a cloth <laughs> takes a belt with nails in it so this belt has nails poking up through the thing and it takes this belt and it wraps it around the eyeball and it's on the catapult now and it's wrapping it around the eyeball to the catapult um and this eye the eyeball starts squirming frantically like it's like flipping out like it's like right like it, it's a circle but it's like writhing like like it's like in the eyes like going everywhere like this um and i'm sitting there well i'm not there but i like i'm watching it and i i was thinking in my head like why is it doing that why is it doing that that's what i was thinking and it was almost like I said it out loud or something, even though that's what I was thinking. And I wasn't even there, but I was thinking that. And then this uh, this white uh, being or whatever, this angel, I think, um, turned and uh, looked at me. And this is another weird thing is that um, I can't recall the face at all. So I can recall everything else in this dream with like um, like a memory. But I cannot rec – the face is like – it's not like it's um like something that's blurred out like – if you, if you would imagine something that's censored because it's like inappropriate and it has like pixels on it, like it's pixelated, it's not, it's just like it has a face, but I can't recall the face. Um, that's the best way I can describe it, really. So, anyway, so it looks at me, um, and is like, this, this demon is, bleh, sorry, that's not what it said. <laughs> it said, this demon will try its hardest. To resist before it leaves you um and that lined up with those desires that i've been having for those two days when i started the fasting and prayer with when it was just crazy it wasn't even me it was just it didn't feel like me when those things were popping into my head and so 
then uh, right after the angel had said that, it like flipped the lever or switch or something, and the catapult like flung, and the eyeball went sailing like through the air and then my point of view so i was in the same point of view the whole dream and then my point of view like switched to like following this eyeball and it just like followed it and i don't know if you remember before i said that like there was rocks everywhere and then there was also there was this huge ravine or like canyon like with just but it just was going down and down and it was like just just continually going down and this eyeball was flung into that ravine and was just falling and falling and falling. And I was like looking at it falling. I was like kind of watching it falling. And then I woke up from that dream. So I woke up from that dream. And the day after that, um, those desires had completely left me. Um, I, I, I mean, now I won the battle for of sexual sin. Like I, I'm not masturbated or any of that. And I'm not ever planning to do it again. I'm not, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to do that again. So too, another reason I wanted to do that fast was because uh, I was re reading the Bible verse or whatever about um, the double-minded person is unstable. And I was literally having a double mind inside of my brain. Um, and I didn't even, th I just thought that this was just me being weird. But after I had that dream, I realized that there was actually like a demonic spirit that had been, um, I don't know if it was living inside of me or living around me or what, but it was on me for like, I don't know, at least like five years or plus. Um, and I just considered that normal or, you know, that's part of me. That's how God made me to be, right? No, that was like a demonic spirit. And like, it freaked me out because I realized like all kinds of people and stuff like that think that like, these problems they have with themselves is just who God made them to be and stuff like that. But it's really like a demonic spirit, most likely, that's around you. Um, and that kind of like, I was so glad that 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 thing wasn't in me anymore. And then I was also like weirded out that that kind of stuff was um was actually real. So, so yeah, that's that's what happened um with that dream, and I. Seriously, like after that day, those desires, like that same intense, that intensity level of it completely left me, like it's gone, like a clean slate, like, like it never existed. Um, so yeah, that, that was just, that, that dream was like just one of the, one of the cooler things that God has shown me.